even further again sorry for the chronological order we're going back to egypt again um mostly covering yeah uh asia and western europe because that's generally where a lot of older civilizations are i didn't cover india because i don't know much about that place um around 1200 uh 2500 bce um, Egyptians used papyrus, right? So before a lot of the stone carvings in the temples, which is, you know, the great builder Khufu, you have, uh, not Cleopatra, but um, Hatshepsut. So those guys are some of the great temple builders. But before that, you know, they also had other pieces of recording history on papyrus. So papyrus, which is also an awful text font, is one of the oldest versions of um Oh, it was one of the oldest versions of paper. Um, before the paper era, that was the material to write on. Um, and so the Egyptians used papyrus similar to how the Asians and Chinese used bamboo. Um, since it was in abundance around that the Nile River, and um, it was easy to acquire, um, they used a lot of that and reeds to weave baskets and to write upon as well. I mean, it's not difficult. It's very difficult material to turn into a writing uh, a piece of material to write upon but they did so because you know uh, you make do with what you got and historically um a lot of the later civilizations would use chalk and other uh, surfaces like marble and whatnot to write upon or even like charcoal like substances stuff that would rub off kind of like how um talc and graphite rubs off of uh, pencils but since writing, but even back then, writing utensils were hard to manufacture. And so a lot of these writing systems would be considered a high level bureaucratic job, similar to sim, their, their job would be similar to a secretary or historian of the modern day. But back then, being literate was definitely an expensive, a white collar job, and maybe even considered a government level job. Uh, it would be similar to an industry like computer programming of today because, you know, there's a lot of high-level knowledge needed. You need to learn characters and you need to have the um, the wealth to be able to get educated. So being um, being literate and knowing how to write is almost like a college degree in the ancient era. And it allowed one to work for businesses and other highly desired jobs for the government. Okay, so that's enough about Egypt. We'll go back to China. I know a lot of uh, <laughs> Asia and uh, uh, West Asia centric history. Apologize on that. Um, so things really started to speed up around 280 because that's um, the Dead Sea around the time of the Dead Sea Scrolls because this is when paper making is really starting to come into development. Uh, China is known for making paper, and the the paper making process is a couple steps and it's quite complicated. Um, they took a lot of pulps, uh, fibers, and other scraps like hemp and cloth to turn it into paper. How the process works, I don't know. I, I know those are the materials they used, but I don't know like in what ratios. However, the paper that they created is not the bleached paper we're used to today and we know today. Um, that's a more modern invention where we turned it white. That took a lot of technology. Um, but the older versions of paper... Um, is very different because one of the things that you don't really consider or realize that um, paper I think used to be gray it, it wasn't this nice white sheen because you know this is all scraps and they're all compiled together and then dried out um, they weren't white because they were all these scraps they were um, so like after the whole process they were like pressed they squeezed the water out and they dried it out and that remaining muddy paper that they left with was not the most absorbent material. It, was, it wasn't the easiest material to work with, right? Like, if you tried to write with ink, the ink wouldn't, like, soak in properly. They had to develop brushes, right? And that's how you get, like, the uh, quill pens and, like, the horse-tailed hairs and whatnot to write. And there was a lot of trial and error, um, research and development and evolution on writing utensils and the production of paper to get to where it is today. It's kind of similar to the beer industry. Like, like beer today is pretty much considered high level beer in the ancient era because of the way we distill things we process it we have bacteria growing in it and like what we consider pencils is really the evolution of millennia of technology just like the way we produce beer is con is uh, the result of millennia of technology so like you know even our cheap craft beer is considered like high level beer in the ancient world uh, it's just an interesting thought to think about and 
Um, because of that, um, a lot of this ink usage led to development of pens. And what's interesting is that as a kid, you don't, it's kind of hard to imagine that pens come before pencils because, you know, in education, they make a lot of kids write with pencils before you start writing with pens because it's erasable and it doesn't waste paper. I, there are schools that make people write with pens just so that they're like, you know, um, people are more cautious about penmanship and uh, uh, calligraphy and writing. But um, I think historically, a lot of people use pen, uh, pencils. Um, but historically, in or in history, a lot of people would learn to write with pens because that's all they had is a writing utensils. And it wouldn't even be high quality pens, it'd be like quills and whatnot. Like, there's a reason why the Declaration of Independence was signed with quills. And teaching that costs a lot because, you know, paper production back then isn't as developed as it is now. So paper is expensive, ink is expensive, and even making quills and writing utensils was expensive. So, um, from the vestiges of my knowledge, uh, from the vestiges of my knowledge, like from the book Frindle, um, he mentioned that the Latin word pinis, um, eventually became the word pen. Obviously that's not how it went, but the simplified version. Um, and then somehow there's a relationship between pen and pencil, although looking at the etymology on my own time, I think they're kind of independent, although I'm not hundred percent sure on that. So don't quote me on that. Um, but they're both writing utensils, and it's interesting to see that the history of the pen is a lot older than the history of the pencil. And now thinking about it, that's definitely true. And it really brings to mind the, the story of the space pen, whereas like NASA, um, it, it's difficult to use uh, ink in space, but it's quite easy to use uh, the graphite rubbings of a pencil in space. The Russians use the pencil. We spent a lot of money on a pen, which I don't think is true, but I do think, uh, because I think pens do work in space. Not 100% sure on how that works. So anyway, um, back to the point. Um, with development of paper, um, there's a couple of other inventions that need to happen uh, before we get to 1500 AD, right? Because, you know, society has to develop, agriculture has to change, right? There has to be, uh, the economies have to change, governments have to change. But eventually, um, 14, I think 68, um, according to Wikipedia or something, is uh, when Johannes Gutenberg enters the picture. And we all know what Johannes Gutenberg does. He starts um, the printing press. And then a guy, another guy named Martin Luther, um, I think he's the one who translates the Bible. Or he gets involved with the translation and the printing of the Bible. And, and then you get the, this large-scale distribution of German Bibles instead of the large-scale distribution instead of the previously monopolized and like um, closed off section of uh, Latin Bibles. And then, so that's around 1500. That's like really when the Bible starts. And the, the King James version is around 1600s because it's called King James after the, uh, I think it's the, I think the, the English are still Catholic at that point, but um, I could be wrong because I'm not well versed on English history. Um, but yeah, King James starts publishing his own version. It could be the Angelican version. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. But with that, um, with the printing press, with those inventions, with the economy, and with the state of the world as, as it is, it then goes to allow Bibles to be easy to, easily distributed due to its um, lightness and easy to carry it, right? Instead of having people and scribes to constantly copy it, you know, you'd have monks copy these books. Um, you can just do it, you could almost like mass publish stuff as well and distribute it uh, far and wide. Um, paper also enabled um, better storage of it, uh, better protection of it. There's a reason why they put leather bindings, started using glue, right? A lot of paper and books were standardized and it allowed writing to be easily transported. It's also one of the reasons why we use paper money instead of actual heavy metals and coins like gold and silver because, you know, Paper is a lot easier and lighter on the wallet and on the person. And although you can still see a few remnants of like the uh, co uh, copper and gold, those types of materials um, among found among uh, pennies, nickels, dimes, um, half dollars, you know, pences, euros, and whatever coin currency that you decide to choose. Um, more on the Bible and just the history of it as a whole. The Bible is one of the most printed books and most read books in the world, right? Uh, I think it's number one. I think everyone can agree on that, um, at least historical estimates assume. Um, 
uh, a couple of the other ones that come to mind would also be uh, Euclid's Elements, which is one of the most famous textbooks as well, although it's not as well known. There is also uh, Mao, Zedong's, um, Mao Zedong's writings that he distributed across China, I think it's around 800 million copies. Uh, the, the Little Prince, as well as a couple uh, in Charles Dickens' Tale of Two Cities. But really, I'm just like saying this from a simple Google search. Um, but it, it just goes to show that books is a very well distributed medium because, you know, there's a lot of books that have been published. And I don't think a lot of files have that sort of grasp that books do. Um, so that definitely covers most of the history of writing and a lot of the older mediums and styles that a book's entailed. Um, and I'm going into another section, which is uh, transition to entertainment. Um, and I'll get into that in a little bit.